Okay, so in this video, we are going to be going over all the entries that were posted to the Cursed Gun Challenge in the Community Challenge section of my Discord. And after this, I will announce who is the winner of that ripe and juicy pre-order of Battlefield 2042. So we're going to get started, and we will start with none other than Sohail the Pixel Boy, who submitted this fine little Kalishnikov, which has gone through some slight modifications in the Khyber Pass region of Pakistan. Uh, for one, they integrated the magwell into the top of the dust cover. Very smart, very smart. This way, the bullets feed faster into the gun. Kalishnikov never thought of that. They got some rails on it, which, I mean, a wood grip like that could fall apart, so they got some zip ties just to be safe. And those zip ties add a whole lot more security. And also, I, I love that they've completely rethought how to align your side picture, since now that this more efficient ammunition feeding system is obstructing your traditional side picture, they've innovated they really innovated on the original kalishnikov design and they just canted the front sight off to the side like this and rather than having to think of a whole uh, system to change how the rear sight picture would work they just took off the rear sight and welded it to the shell ejection cover now that is smart you, you might think it's stupid you might think that this is just a horrible cursed gun design, but this design is really smart. You see that? So it it does two times as both your shell ejection port and your rear sight. Very, very smart, Sahail. I mean, I know you want to go into like game design and 3D modeling and all that, but you might have a really bright future at the Kalishnikov's arm groups, you know, just saying. And of course, on this design, since it's actually very hard and can be very expensive to find uh, traditional weapon silencers, it seems they just repurposed a device from another machine uh, for use here. Well, I've certainly never seen anyone use one of those before. And of course, he did a very good job with all the texturing on the weapon. I especially love the uh, weld mark normal details that are all across this. This is really, really good work. All right, but from here, we're gonna move on to Amorga, who submitted this little uh, very, very, very stubby 12 gauge. And I really like the texture work he put into this, and I really like your final render. It looks very good. I especially like this whole engraving detail you got here. There's a little bit of like the texture projection on the wood, but that's okay. And ultimately, uh, really good work on this, except I would never ever want to pick this gun up if I saw it. I think I would consider it a greater hazard to me than anyone on the other end of the barrel. But this is a really good entry from Amorga, and now we're going to move on to Smirnov, who submitted something that I can only describe as an HK that Heckler and Coach made while on Quaaludes. So what we have here is a rifle, which looks like it shoots a 308. It has a gas tube that protrudes farther than the actual end of the barrel, so really good recoil compensation there. In fact, maybe you get so much recoil compensation out of that gas tube that it actually makes up for it having this tiny little wireframe stock, which really wouldn't help much shooting a 308 from a weapon of this size. But uh, anywho, anywho. And what I actually like about this design is, believe it or not, I could actually imagine this as a real experimental weapons concept that has like a few billion dollars thrown into it for testing purposes and then gets issued to some small European Union country for about a year until it's completely rejected and then thrown by the wayside. Something that you might actually see on Forgotten Weapons. But yeah, this is a complete nightmare of a design. I especially love how you have this little ice pick bayonet 
that's attached to the gas tube. Okay, and from here, we'll finally come up to Trulendis, who submitted this fine Thompson M1A1, which has gone through some slight modifications. For one, they've removed a good portion of the original wood furniture. Uh, they managed to get a Picatinny rail there so you can fit your EOTech. And they've modified it to be fitted with what looks like this um, extendable, almost Franchi spa style stock on it. Uh, I really like this. It's almost like a Zenit or something like that. And uh, yeah. Okay, now, true story. I've lived in Texas for a long time and seen a lot of firearms. Gun stores are about as common as Starbucks coffee. And if there's one thing that I hate more, one pet peeve that I have, is it's all the people who would buy a classic firearm, like something from the WW2 era, and they would tear off all the original furniture and actually do stuff like this, where they're retrofitting like new modern hardware on it. They'll even do it with some other guns, like a really nice classic SKS with the original wood stock or a Mosin Nagant, and they just replace all of that with this sleek black modern hardware. So good job, Trulendis. I hate it. Okay, and Heavy is still warbling in the background with excitement for me to announce the winner. And you in the Discord already know, it's your boy, Sohail, the Pixel Boy. I'll be getting in contact with you on Steam to give you that juicy pre-order copy of Battlefield 2042. And to everyone else, I know I probably shouldn't be making a habit out of this, but for all the hard work that you put into your entries, I'll be giving each of you a copy of the game Rust. That's not so much of a prize as it is an FU. You'll know if you tried the game. Okay, so that concludes the Cursed Weapons Challenge. If you want to get involved in some of these community challenges, then be sure to check out my Discord, linked in the description below. I will hopefully be announcing the next challenge in a video this coming Friday. So be sure to like and subscribe.